You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Kuiper's big board is the top 25 prospects in the country. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that he's got Caleb Williams ranked number one overall on his big board, and I, I can't see anything changing that between now and the draft. Caleb Williams has kind of been that consensus top prospect that uh, everybody is sort of vying for here at the top of the draft. So uh, Mel kuiper has got Caleb Williams number one on his big board, and um, he's got Marvin Harrison Jr. number two, and then Drake May number three. That actually kind of falls in line with what we've seen with a lot of mock drafts here of late. Um, there is one LSU Tiger, and it's the player that we would all assume would be here, and he's got Malik Neighbors number 12 on his big board, so ranked number 12 as the 12th best prospect in this draft. One spot ahead of Joe Alt, the big offensive tackle from Notre Dame. The biggest surprise on this list is who comes in at number 16. How about the name Landon Jackson? Uh, Landon Jackson, of course, who we had a great chance to talk to at SEC Media Days. I uh, got to do a one-on-one -on -one with Landon. Landon is from Texarkana, who started his career at LSU, tore his ACL, unfortunately, and um, it never really materialized here. He transferred to Arkansas and has had a fantastic season. He had three and a half sacks in their game against Alabama in Week 7. So, Landon Jackson has seen his star elevated. The interesting thing about Landon, I remember, is talking to coaches at the time, was that he was just, he was he's such a big guy, like 6'7, 280, but he's very stiff. So, not a guy that was ever going to bend the edge, but more of a big end. But if you're looking in a 3 4 for that traditional sort of like big end where like Ali Gay played a year ago, that's um, that could be a spot for Landon Jackson. But you wish he's a great young guy, man. So, you wish the best for him. So, glad to see that. So, Bukhyper also ranks the top 10 players at every position. And there's only three LSU players. He's got Malik Neighbors as the fourth best wide receiver. Makai Wingo is the seventh best defensive tackle. And Jaden Daniels as the eighth best quarterback. This is the thing that surprises me. And I, I hope this isn't a purple and gold sunglasses take. But at some point, you have to start to trust what you see on film. And it can't be what your preconceived notions were. The best example that I can give that's relevant here is Joe Burrow, of course. And I'm please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that Jaden Daniels is Joe Burrow, but here's the point I'm making. And I remember this because we talked about this a lot before that 2020 draft where Burrow went number one. That offseason, so the offseason between the 2018 and 2019 seasons, when you go back and look at the mock drafts before the 2019 season, Joe Burrow was roundly projected as a late day three pick like around five, six, seven pick is kind of where he was projected going into the 2019 season. Well, he ends up going first overall. Why? Because you saw what he did in 2019. He was spectacular in every sense, not only at, with his accuracy, with his arm strength, with his decision-making, his toughness, his leadership, his, the intangibles, everything was there. You saw it. And I think you're seeing something similar with Jaden Daniels. I'm not saying that Jaden Daniels is having literally the greatest season any of us have ever seen in college football history. But what I'm saying is we're seeing a guy that is far outperforming what the, the, the projections were for him as, as a rising fifth-year player. So the, the quarterback ratings, as Kuiper has it, uh, Caleb Williams is number one. Drake May is number two. Shadur Sanders, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Quinn Ewers, then Jaden Daniels, Riley, Riley Leonard, Michael Pratt. I can understand why Caleb Williams and Drake May would be number one and two. Because when you're, you're looking at prospects and you're projecting to the next level, there are certain things you're looking for as far as measurables. And there are going to be guys that go at the top of any draft because of those measurables. Mitchell Trubisky is a great example of that. He was a giant, strong-armed kid who, who checked every box, but when you actually looked at what he did on the field during his tournament time in North Carolina, it didn't play. So it's not surprising that it didn't work out for him. You know, Josh Allen was one of those guys who was a small school guy at Wyoming, but he went to the Combine, and then you saw all of the raw ability matched with the intangibles, and you can understand why 
Josh Allen, ro- Senior Bowl, rose up draft boards. And maybe that's what it's going to take for Jaden. Maybe it's going to take getting through the season and going to the combine and doing the interview process, probably going to the Senior Bowl as well, and then you're going to see him start to rise up draft boards. But quite honestly, with utmost respect for the job that Shadur Sanders has done this year because he has taken a beating behind a terrible offensive line. Michael Penix is looks like a franchise quarterback. I can't get there with Bo Nix, and maybe it's just because I'm scarred from his time at Auburn. And J.J. McCarthy has done a whole lot of nothing. Like, respect, you're the quarterback of a team that's undefeated right now, but you have played absolutely filthy garbage teams, and you're just better than everyone. It kind of reminds me of of a Stetson Bennett a year ago. That's my what and what with J.J. McCarthy this year. Are they winning with you, or are they winning because of you? Well, with Stetson, they were winning with him. And with J.J. McCarthy, I kind of feel the same thing. I, I will gladly... Um, stand corrected if we get to a point in the season where he proves that he is that dude. I don't know if we'll have that opportunity. But Jaden has proven it. So, like, if I were thinking about it, what quarterbacks would I want if I'm drafting for my favorite team? I would still have Caleb Williams, number one, for all the reasons everybody has. And I could get down with saying Drake May, number two. I'm not so sure that there's a quarterback I'd take ahead of Jaden Daniels at number three. Um I think Shadur Sanders is fantastic. I would love to have seen him done it for more than just this one sort of half season at Colorado. Like I would love it if Shadur goes back to Colorado for another season. I'm not sure if that's in the cards, if he's going to be a top 10 pick or whatever it may be, but I'd love to see Shadur with another season of major college football. Um, I I, kind of think Penix and Jaden would be what and what for me after Caleb Williams, Drake May. But... This will all play play out in time, and we'll see how it goes. But it is interesting to watch and to keep an eye on where, like, I, I would take Jaden Daniels over Quinn Ewers in a heartbeat. J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, absolutely. I'd take Jaden Daniels over those guys. We'll keep an eye on it as we uh, go through the season and get closer uh, to draft day. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.